In this video, I want to look at essay question creation and marking. I'm going to add a question here as the instructor, and I'm going to make it a short answer essay. And uh, and I could have a rubric, and I could align learning objectives. But for now, I'll just create that as an essay question. I'll also switch over to my student mode. Here's my student. So, uh, a couple of other t I don't know if it's true or false. And the essay, sorry. And the essay question answer, of course, is 42. And I've set, as I do in all my tests, she has the ability to review her answers, make sure she's answered everything, and then she submits it. And at this point, uh, it's been submitted, and I've ha I have it set so she can see whether the answers, but this one you'll notice is pending review. We've got to go back to the instructor, and uh, if I go ahead and bring the instructor out and run a refresh, Probably uh, just uh, I've got one pending review of a test quiz submission. That's because I have to go in and manually mark that essay question. And so I'm going to go over here on the right, view attempts. And then he's the one that has pending review. She's previously taken this uh, test. Uh, and uh, all I do is go to view edit. And then down here, I can now manually mark this however many points it's worth. Or if there was a rubric at this, this will <clears throat> allow me access to that rubric. Uh, and that's full credit for a correct answer. Mm. Uh, the problem isn't the question. The, the problem is that the, uh, the answer 42 uh, is the ultimate meaning of life and uh, is something like 6 times 7 is 42, 6 and 5 times 8, never mind. But the point is, with that done, I can then save changes, and that will save that change. And for Angelina now, uh, if I refresh, she'll now see the grade she's got on that. If I've if the test and quiz is set uh, in the fashion in which I set it here as the instructor, I happen to have set it so that she can see the answers. Um, and uh, from in class experience, I found students really benefit from knowing whether or not they've done well or not. But online, that means that they could possibly pass along. Uh, whether or not they got something right or wrong. Like if it's set this way, they they won't know what the answer is, but they'll know whether they got it right or wrong. And so that they could pass along the right answers. And I I realized, that thanks to uh, a presentation by Professor Hellman and Yap, that tests aren't how I'm going to do assessment anymore. I'm going to do assessment through other means but tests become simply a homework assignment, another way of looking at what the students can and cannot do. But I no longer look at a test as the way that I measure what the students know and don't know. I have to find other ways in the online world to do that. Tests don't measure that anymore. Yes, I could use a locked browser, but if they have a second device in the house, the locked browser won't have any meaning. Ultimately, the tests cannot be proctored. 
and then unless they're proctored you can't control secondary devices and so locking the browser won't necessarily help either so I usually set them this way and yes I know students can pass answers to each other but I want them to know whether they got it right or wrong this is practice they can see whether or not they're doing something right and I'll be using other ways assignments primarily to determine what they can and can't do during the course I'll also be using some presentations that they'll put together to help me understand what they can and can't do more open-ended sorts of assessments well that's all I wanted to touch on today was marking uh, marking these uh, tests uh, but uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that everything changes when you move online and the role of tests in my opinion changes and I have to find other uh, perhaps more creative ways to actually do the assessment that I used to get done by tests.